Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you're all safe and well. This is the Arrows Hobby 50mm EDF L39 Albatross with a single S. It's four parts. Well, five if you include the removable canopy. I've already done some work on it. So I think if I go through that first with you, then we'll get on with the rest of the assembly. Keith from the United States, who always responds to my postings. Thanks, Keith. He gave me the suggestion to use these ones. I was going to go with the Ukrainian ones. But actually, these stand out better. Yeah, they could be confused as Swiss, I suppose. But at least you've got that red mixed in with the blue and the silver. Having looked at some videos, I'm hearing that this is quite a hard jet to see because of its colours. So I've done that. I have, of course, made sure everyone knows that its uh, residency is in the United Kingdom of Great Britain. And that's England to be precise. Some of the decals were already on it, such as the black and yellow checking at the top of the fin. The L39C down at the bottom of the fin, that was already on it. The danger was already on there. Let me come to the front. The e ejection, they're supposed to say danger ejection system or something, ejector seat. And they've got no text in them at all. But they were already put on, as was the danger triangle for the air intakes. Uh, the 58 at the nose was already on, and I just stuck on uh, a nose art that I think was the right coloration because it's got the black, it's got the blue, and uh, I just liked it. I thought it went in okay. The wires you can see hanging down are for the ailerons, they were actually pushed through into the cockpit. So I've threaded them back down through the wing saddle so I can make the connections and there's, uh, you'll see it a bit later, there's quite a big gap in there and I can just coil it all up out of the way. So looking at the main wing itself, I've put the two wing decals on. I've tried to copy the picture that they showed you, the instructions. The centre of gravity has already been marked, as you can see, and it's the usual process for me measure back from the leading edge. Now I measure back from this point and come down. So if you look really closely, you'll see a tiny little dot there. That's measured from the correct point. Then I measure outwards from the fuselage to a convenient point where I can place my fingers either side of the fuselage to balance it out. Cocktail sticks go in next to make a little hole up to the bottom of the wing. I then pull them out and then put on my central gravity markers. They're actually cut in half and then sliced. So when I push the cocktail stick through, they don't all shrink up and go in with the cocktail sticks. They're glued in and they're at 40 millimeters from the leading edge which seems really, really small amount, because that's a big wing. But that's where it said 40 to 45. I've gone for the forward most, so it's on 40. I can always adjust it slightly by just shifting the battery around. On the other side of the wing, I had nothing to do really, except put the, they're called roundels, but they're not round, they're shield shape, aren't they? And that's it. Uh, no, it's not it. Let's take a look inside the battery bay. Okay, so here's the battery bay, and I didn't want my receiver in the bay. So I've got all of that to play with, and I'm going to be using a 2800 milliamp per hour 3S in this. I think it will need to go right up against this bulkhead here, as far back as it can go. So I didn't want anything forward that would add to the weight situation. This is an AR410. Obviously you've got your throttle, elevator and ailerons. There is no rudder on this, it's just a bank and yank. Therefore the gyro switching system is plugged into the rudder and that's assigned, I assign it to auxiliary 2 and then a switch to auxiliary 2. You basically get the same as with a Spectrum stabilised receiver. 
So you would get AS3X. It's uh, an adjustment for the wind conditions. So it just tries to stabilise the aircraft in bad conditions. They call it something bizarre. Um, I'm not bothered, it's AS3X. Then you have your stabilised, which is basically self-levelling. Um, if you bank over and then let go of the sticks, it will automatically adjust the plane back to level flight. And then on this, which you can't do on a Spectrum without making some changes to your transmitter, on this you can switch it to off. So there is no stabilisation on at all. On a Spectrum system, you need to have the gains adjustable on a knob so you can switch it to something like AS3X then turn all the gains down through your transmitter and that turns it off but on this you've got an off AS3X and what I call safe which is put it back into level flight now the gyro is in fact under this receiver it just sits under there I've got a pad between it and the receiver just to cushion them a bit and what I've done the wires all came out into the battery bay I've just turned them back on themselves and pushed them back out of the way so they actually do like an S in there so they're coming out from here going back and then coming back around and they're plugging into the receiver at this end that leaves the bind button free should I ever change the receivers and I don't need to mess around I can just push it now I did think about pushing that right back. The problem is there's nothing in there, it's just a gap. So if you push that back, it, these wires are long enough, it will drop down into the air ducts and it will flap around in there. So you don't want that. The first job on the instructions, <laughs> so I've done things all in the wrong order but it doesn't matter, is to stick the tail plane and the elevators on. These are pressed foam hinges, there's nothing special about them, they're not laminated, so do give them a good wiggle, just to free them up, make them as loose as you can. And if you feel so inclined, tape, it's a medical tape, um, it's, it comes looking like this, I don't have much left. What I recommend is you just put a bit on the back, down the, the groove, or get a bit of foam tack, put it in there, spread it along, and just leave it like that. That's because foam tack is flexible when dry, so you will be able to do that once it's dry, and it does create uh, almost something as good as this stuff across there. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to put a bit of foam tack on it and using a cotton bud just spread it down there leaving it open like that. Don't leave it like that because it will glue in that position where if you leave it like that the glue will go off and then you can hinge it. I'm going to go and do that now. I'll be back. Two very boring minutes later. I'm happy now that this hinge is safer than it was before. If you look very carefully, and maybe if I move it in the light, you'll see it looks a little wet. That's the phone tack, that's the layer of phone tack, but it's not wet because it hinges perfectly fine. So it's almost like putting a lamination down there. So I'm happy with that. This has to go in there. I dry fit it first and what they've done is they've marked they've obviously left a little area here with no paint on and a little area here for gluing but I'm just going to glue the whole the whole area that sits in like that there's no complication to it and then you need to adjust these they're now centered <coughs> they're centered the push rods. If I were to leave them like that I would have a lot of down elevator. So, so before I glue it on I'm going to twist that one out and this one is very much the same and I've got lots of metal in there, thread that I can 
move the clevis up on. I think the easiest way of doing this is to remove that again, hold that down and give it, I don't know, maybe three turns out. That might have been four, four turns out like that. Well, I've turned that four times and the thread is now at the front of the plastic bit. I'm going to turn it one more time so I know it's still within a good piece of that plastic because that's what holds the thing on the thread. If it doesn't stay level, because it's not level at the moment, if I do that and connect it up, I've got a little bit of down still. If it still gives me down after one complete turn, I can adjust it in the wing saddle. There's enough here. There's enough sticking out this side of the grommet to be able to move this forward slightly and then bolt it, bolt it, grommet it back down. I think I'll get away with another turn on this. Let's just see. That's a half. That's a full. And there's still plenty holding that on. Let's see what that's like. Hmm. Is there? After five, six turns, it still gives me down elevator. I will glue it in, I will connect it, and I'll adjust it at the servo. Let's do the same to the other side. Yeah, I've got the same concern with this one. I've now screwed it out so the push rod thread is just at the start. It comes through this plastic bit and just sits flush with the start of the actual clevis itself, the opening. But it's still, if I connect it, it'll still going to be slightly down elevator. So I will be adjusting it at the servo. I'll connect those up, then we'll see how much adjustment I have to make. That bent bit is supposed to be straight. Here. So the simplest of tasks, this hole is too small, the holes are too small for that to go through. I tried to force it and it broke. So I now have to take this whole piece off and hope that I have one of those of that size that isn't broken. A little longer than a few minutes later. I've replaced these awful things. They're really not good quality at all. They're just awful. Anyway, I've replaced those with these nice, nice ones. The thread went on there really nice and tight. Unfortunately, in doing that, I've <laughs> uncentered everything. I'm just going to centre this back up. And that's easily done by just connecting to a battery. Transmitter's already on, I had it in sleep mode. It's supposed to be level by the way. Right, that's done. Turn that off. These are now centered. And I can go back to making adjustments. It's pretty good, it's just got to come out maybe one turn. Yeah, that's good, that one's good. I'll do the same on this one. Let's come out one turn. Gonna be pretty good. 
pretty good. They are the holes on the horns do need widening. I have a simple way of doing that. You put a nice sharp scalpel into the hole and then you just rotate. All right, so I've made the holes a little bit bigger. Pop that in there. Let's see what they're like. Yeah, that's nice actually. I think that might be bang on that one. And that one. So they fit nicely and it feels as if the there's a little bit of give in it. That's my fault because I made them just a bit oversized. That's quite good. And they feel level. Right, so now that we've done that, we can glue this baby in place. I don't know if any of you have seen this on the iX14. It's a bit slow to power up. So they've got this um, sleep mode built into it. Two pushes of the button and you get this slide. Slide it down to sweep. Now because I've got an SD card that I'm reading from in it, it comes up with a warning and I say OK. And it just goes to sleep and the actual transmission stops. So that's for all intents and purposes off. Then when I want to use it again, tap on there and it's back. There we are. Back up. Anyway, I don't want it for now. So that's what I'm doing. And she's now asleep again. <laughs> Lovely device. Right, glue. I'm going to cover this piece with the glue and then I'm going to slide it on over there. I'll probably need more glue than I've got in this tube. I'm going to use it up first. 